throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and did you know that Pippin is the actual real hero of Return of the King? Uh, person, everybody knows the real hero is Sam. He carried Frodo up Mount Doom. Which would not have been possible if it weren't for Pippin. Not listening. I'm not listening. Well, you clicked on this video, so you're gonna. Now, I'm sticking strictly to the film's interpretation of the novels, as I know there are some delineations. So, all of you Tolkien bookworms, let's keep your hobbit feet on. Here's why I think that Pippin is the real hero of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. But Pippin's the guy who's always screwing stuff up. Stupid screw up. Yeah, it looks that way, but I'm about to blow your little mind and make you look at the hobbit movies in a whole new light. So, Peregrine Took is the youngest of the four hobbits and the fellowship. In the film, Billy Boyd was actually the oldest of the four, although how could you tell with that baby face? Now, through his father, Pippin is a first cousin of Mary and is also related to Frodo. Frodo Baggins. He's my second cousin. Once removed on his mother's side. Now, while not blood related to Sam, Pippin's son Faramir ends up marrying Sam's daughter Goldilocks in 1463 after the events of the film. Unlike Belle, who wants out of her provincial life, Pippin, like most hobbits, cherishes the Shire and their elementary lifestyle. The setup in the extended cut beautifully outlines the culture and characteristics of hobbits, giving us an inside look as to why Pippin appears to be dim-witted and tone-deaf in the Fellowship film. Being neither renowned as great warriors, nor counted among the very wise. It's not that he's unintelligent, he's just sheltered. Hobbits have never traveled outside of the familiar. Well, most hobbits don't anyways. I'm going on an adventure! In the movie, Merry and Pippin stumble into Frodo and Sam's quest without fully grasping what's happening. Indeed, Pippin's ability to comprehend how dire their situation is at the beginning appears bizarre to the audience. For instance, after hearing him give the innkeeper a different name, he blew Frodo's alias at the Prancing Pony immediately at the bar. Should I know about him? He's over there. Frodo Baggins. Who will I do? Frodo has to rush over to stop him from spilling more secrets, which causes him to slip and use the ring for the first time, thus signaling the Nazgul to their whereabouts. Luckily, Strider was there to meet them, otherwise it would have been game over. After Aragorn warns them that the ring rays will continue to hunt them, and therefore they must make haste to the elves, Pippin can't understand why they can't stop for their meals. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? After all, it's what they've always done. Why would he behave any differently just because they weren't at the Shire? But the hobbits do kick that multi-meal habit pretty quickly at Amon Sul. Nothing like watching your best friend get stabbed with a Morgul blade to put you off your supper. And that's when the Fellowship brought Frodo to Rivendell to be healed by Elrond. And look, if Pippin is the real hero of the story, then Elrond is a close second. He healed Frodo, convened the Fellowship, and had a change of heart that basically put Aragorn on the throne. And that's why I'm so excited that Elrond is finally going to be a playable character in Lord of the Rings, the Heroes of Middle Earth, and thanks to Electronic Arts for sponsoring this video. What's Heroes of Middle Earth? Dude, you haven't played that game? Got no thumbs, dude. Fair enough. All right, so Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth is a new turn based RPG set in Tolkien's Middle Earth. But what I really love about this game is that the One Ring has corrupted the timeline, sending you across the eras into like different major events. So the game spans thousands of years of history, so you can mix and match characters from different eras. And then you can relive all the classic events or tell new stories of your own. So it's like the whole Tolkien saga in one game. This is the first time a game has drawn from the entire lore as you work with classic heroes to repair the timeline. The game also has a fun mix of classic heroes and incredibly deep cut characters from like deep deep within Tolkien's works. But the very exciting thing is that this game is about to introduce the first legendary character, Elrond, on June 26. Legendary characters can be unlocked in these special legendary adventure events that are for a limited time. And to get Elrond, you'll want to collect five elven characters before the event starts on June 26. And believe me, if you play this game, you are definitely going to want this legendary character. Elrond wields one of the Rings of Power, and just like in the novels, he is a key character. He's a support hybrid, meaning that he can heal and revive, but also summon a Bruin for a powerful multi-target attack. Now, these legendary adventures are only available for a limited time, and if you love Lord of the Rings, this game is a really fun new way to explore this story. So, to download the game for free, click the link in the description or scan this QR code. Now, back to Pippin. At Rivendell, during the Council of Elrond, Pippin and Merry are finally in a position to choose whether or not to go home or to join the Fellowship. In true camaraderie spirit, they insist on coming along, even though Merry apparently was the only one at the party who was paying attention to what the quest was. Right. 
Where are we going? Pippin may be clueless, but what's admirable about this moment is his eagerness to sign up to support Frodo. Well, why are the hobbits even allowed to go in the first place? Well, in a room full of powerful elves, dwarves, and men, every hobbit answers the call, while most of the others present don't. That speaks volumes about the hobbit's character. Hobbits really are amazing creatures. You can learn all that there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet after a hundred years, they can still surprise you. After all, Gandalf has witnessed firsthand how heroic hobbits can be when you give them the chance. After all, he pulled Bilbo at a bag end, and then he proved himself to be a hero. Now, when Galadriel asks why he takes a halfling on the mission to the Lonely Mountain, he replies, I found it is the small things, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keeps the darkness at bay. Pippin will indeed keep the darkness at bay for Gandalf, just not in this movie. In fact, he's more of an endurance than a help once they reach the entrance of Moria. What are you going to do then? Knock your head against these doors, Peregrine Took! As Gandalf struggles to remember the password, Merry and Pippin toss rocks into the Lake of Sirenon, which disturbs the Watcher in the water. Pull of a took. After very nearly escaping its wrath, the group gets barricaded in the mines, forcing them to make a four-day journey to the other side. Their presence may have gone unnoticed, if not for... Now, I'm not gonna lie, this still hurts to watch. Pippin's inquisitive nature became the spark that littered the mines full of goblins, leading to the Balrog's awakening and Gandalf the Grey's demise. Are he supposed to be the hero of the trilogy? Well, why do we fall, Master Bruce? Ask Gandalf. That's right, Doug, so we can learn to pick ourselves back up again. Thanks for playing along. Now, Pippin's comeback will be epic, but for now, it's just outright painful for him and everyone involved to watch. Now, the first film ends grimly, with Pippin and Merry being captured after Boromir dies, defending them from the Urukai sent by Saruman. The two hobbits had bravely acted as bait to allow Frodo to escape, after they realized that he chose to go alone without the Fellowship. Witnessing Boromir's death was also like taking an arrow to his own heart, which forever alters Pippin and impacts his behavior later in Return of the King. The windmills of his little hobbit mind start turning for Pippin in the Two Towers. He can be quite clever when put under frightful constraints. When the uruk sniff out that Aragorn is tracking them, Pippin pulls off his leaf pendant to leave a clue as to where they've gone. After Merry and Pippin escape into Fanghorn Forest after the Rohan attack, they encounter Treebeard and are left purposefully with him by Gandalf, who is now Gandalf the White. Coming of Merry and Pippin will be like the falling of small stones that starts an avalanche. And he became Gandalf the White because of Pippin. Had he not accidentally alerted the Balrog, then Gandalf never would have gotten this massive power upgrade. Gandalf hopes that Merry and Pippin's presence in Fanghorn will inspire the Ents to go to war, as the wizard needs all hands on deck. Now, the Ents are wary of this idea, as they have not troubled themselves with the outside world for a long time. Deciding anything also takes a while, as their communication pattern is so... After what appears to take eons, their Entmut concludes with the decision to take the Swedish route and remain out of the war. You mean Switzerland? I mean both. Frustrated, Mary gives an impassioned speech, hoping to sway the Ents from their decision, which falls on deaf ears. At this point, Pippin also starts to believe that they shouldn't be involved as well. It's too big for us. What can we do in the end? We've got the Shire. There won't be a Shire. A harsh reality sets in for Pippin. He can't return to his life in the Shire as long as the two towers stand. So, Pippin gets an idea. Take us south. South? But that will lead you past Isengard. Yes, exactly. What a clever hobbit. Pippin believes that if seeing is believing, then Treebeard must see that the war has already come to the forest. Or did he know there would be destruction? Not exactly. He's never been to Isengard, and there's no hint that they knew that Saruman had started burning the forest to breed his army. Gandalf could possibly have said something in passing, but if he had, then we would have seen that discussed at the Entmoot. Merry, for sure, would have included that little nugget in his impassioned speech. So I'm going to go with Pippin just had a hunch that paid off in spades. <laughs> Thanks to Pippin, the last march of the Ents commences and brings about the downfall of Isengard and its Urukai army. The ripple effect of Pippin's hunch can also be witnessed in the extended cut when the trees of Fanghorn also take out the remaining army that marched to Helm's Deep. Okay, that's pretty cool. Indeed, Doug. Just wait. Pippin's finest hour will come when he saves Minas Tirith, Merry, Gandalf, and indirectly Frodo and Sam. Now, most of the Fellowship gets reunited at the beginning of Return of the King. Gandalf, Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn arrive at Isengard with King Theoden to confront Saruman, and then they find Merry and Pippin celebrating. We are sitting on a field of victory, enjoying a few well-earned comforts. The confrontation with the fallen wizard goes less than stellar, concluding with Saruman plummeting to his death. Rolling out of his sleeve is the palantir that Saruman used to communicate with Sauron. Pippin goes to pluck it out of the water. I'll take that, my lad. 
Quickly now. Now, after Gandalf took it from him, Pippin remained curious about it. So strong was his desire to look upon the Palantir again that he actually trails out of thought during a Hobbit song at the Edoras celebration and sneaks a peek when Gandalf is sleeping. Why do you always have to look? I don't know. I can't help it. What follows shapes the rest of the film. The Dark Lord Sauron appears and overtakes Pippin. A terrified Mary calls for help. Aragorn grabs the Palantir before dropping it to the floor, and Gandalf quickly covers it, but the damage is done. <laughs> However, this time Pippin's inquisitive nature brings good fortune for Team Fellowship. Pippin saw the White Tree of Gondor burning, and Gandalf translates this to mean that Sauron's next move is to attack Minas Tirith, the great city of Gondor. The defeat of Helm's Deep worries Sauron. He is now aware that the heir of men, Aragorn, exists and that he could potentially unite all of Middle-earth under one banner, threatening to ruin Sauron's plan of picking off every race one by one. Because of Pippin's foolish act, the Fellowship can now strategize. If the beacons of Gondor are lit, Rohan must be ready for war. Another upside is that this indirectly helps out Sam and Frodo. Sauron believes that Pippin has the ring, which means that his great eye will be fixed on him and not on the ring bearer. Gandalf can't let Pippin out of his sight, so he must accompany him to Minas Tirith and separate the dynamic duo. We'll see each other soon, won't we? At Minas Tirith, Pippin meets the steward of Gondor and Boromir's father, Denethor. When they arrive, they are met with a grieving father. Now, Denethor might have been a reasonable man once, maybe even a fantastic leader. However, that's not the case here. He promptly sends Gandalf away, heeding none of his warnings, for he will not listen to someone who intends to uproot him from his position of power. Pippin's noble pledge to Denethor makes him a guard of the Citadel. Now, he has no idea what that will entail or how advantageous that position will be later on. So I imagine this is just a ceremonial position. Denethor's refusal to do something means that Pippin must light the beacons. You must not fail me. If Pippin had failed, Rohan would not have come, and Aragorn would not have traveled to the Pass of the Dead in the White Mountains. Now, being a guard places Pippin in strategic positions throughout the Siege of Gondor. He steps in to help protect Gandalf and witness Denethor's attempt to set a pyre for him and his younger son Faramir. Believing that Sauron's forces would prevail in battle, Denethor wishes to burn alive with his son, but Pippin fetches Gandalf, and together they save Faramir's life. Surpasses Denethor, son of after the Allies claim victory in the Battle of Pelennor Fields, Pippin searches for Merry, who's been badly wounded from stabbing the Witch King of Angmar. He discovers him under a corpse and vows to look after his friend. I'm going to look after you. Now, thanks to Pippin, Merry was not left to perish in the field and could heal just in time for the final confrontation at the Black Gates, where both hobbits charge out first, right after Aragorn. I mean, that is such a touching moment. Even with both hobbits battered and bruised, they still rally for their kin, ready to fight to the bitter end. It's the final distraction Frodo and Sam need to complete their mission. With all of Mordor engaged in the battle, the ring could be taken into the mountain to be destroyed. By the end, Pippin went from a feasting fool to a knight of Gondor. If not for him, the Ents wouldn't have defeated Isengard and Gondor would have fallen. Having Sauron's eye fixed on Pippin and Minas Tirith proved to be the pinnacle diversion that Sam and Frodo needed to complete their quest. But Ryan, the domino effect of Pippin viewing the Palantir was just dumb luck. That doesn't make him the hero. All right, well, what's your definition of hero? Webster defines hero as a person admired for achievement and noble qualities and one who shows great courage. Pippin never ran from a fight, even though he was not skilled with a sword. He nobly volunteered his service as payment for Baromir's death and uncovered Sauron's plans without revealing Frodo and the ring's whereabouts, whether it was an accident or not. There's a reason Aragorn bows to the hobbits at his coronation. Middle Earth is saved due to their bravery and conviction to do the right thing because but there's some good in this world, Mr. Furl, and it's worth fighting for. The Lord of the Rings reminds us that we don't need to be a particular race or have a specific birthright to be a hero. The point of placing the hobbits throughout every faction of this conflict is to showcase that true heroism can come from anyone, even the smallest of us. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. They are all heroes. Nevertheless, the fact remains that if Pippin had not been present, there's no telling what would have happened to the rest of the Fellowship in Return of the King. Pippin bows to no one. But if you doubt me, ask him yourself. Is Pippin what? the real hero? But that's just what I think, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Pippin and the Lord of the Rings trilogy in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.